When rain falls on the roof, it collects in the gutter and flows to the downspout. The leaf deflector is meant to keep any large leaves or debris out of the rainwater collection system. The rainwater initially flows into the first flush diversion system, designed to collect the dirtiest water, or first flush, of each rain event. Once full, the rainwater spills over into the fill piping and into the storage tanks. Fill piping can be buried below ground, called a wet system, or suspended above ground, called a dry system. Storage tanks are typically installed on gravel pads and have a gauge to show how much water is in the tanks and valves to isolate each tank for maintenance. Typically, the valves will be open and the tanks will act as one large storage system, filling and draining at the same rate. When the tanks are full, any additional rainwater will flow into the tanks, out an overflow pipe, and outfall onto a rock pad, meant to prevent erosion from the overflow water. The distribution system consists of a check valve, pump, pressure tank, filter, and pressure pipe, commonly routed to a hose bib near a garden. The filter should prevent clogging in a drip irrigation system. To ensure that the pump is operational, check that the circuit breaker at the house and the pump are both turned on. Next, turn on the pressure switch at the pump. Hold the pressure switch bar to the middle position to build up pressure. Once the minimum pressure is reached, the switch will pop into the on position and the pump will be operational. Gravity systems operate without a pump because the tanks were located at a high enough elevation to provide adequate pressure. All systems were also outfitted with a fire hose connection for emergency water use. Rainwater catchment systems are meant to capture and store water in the winter for use during the summer. These systems typically come with a 20-year forbearance agreement in which the landowner agrees to forbear the equivalent volume of water from their existing water source during the summer months, typically August through October. Regular maintenance is important to keep your system operational through the duration of the project, and hopefully longer. On an annual basis, you should do the following. Inspect the entire system. Look for any leaks, cracks, or other signs of disrepair. Clean out gutters before the start of the rainy season. Houses with more trees nearby should clean out the gutters more frequently. Clean the leaf deflector annually before the rainy season. Check the leaf deflector periodically during storms if you observe water spilling out of the gutter or downspout as it may be clogged. Open the first flush diversion system and clean out any debris annually before the first rain event. Inspect the conveyance piping systems, both wet and dry, annually. If freezing is predicted, drain the wet pipe system using the drain valve. Check the hose bib for leaks annually and replace the washer or other parts as needed. Inspect the overflow rock riprap pad annually. Check that water is flowing when the tanks are full and there is no erosion or clogging. If you see erosion, add some more rocks to the pad. Monitor the tanks to ensure that fine sediment is not building up, algae is not growing, and insects have not gained access. Clean tanks at a time when minimal water is stored in them. For sediment buildup, use a hose to fill a few inches of water in the bottom of the tank to flush sediment through the tank outlet and drain. For algae, use soap and water to scrub the inside of the tank with a brush or sponge. Do not use bleach. Flush tank cleaning water through the system drain. Use the isolation valves to take one tank offline at a time. Tightly secure the lid after cleaning. Warning, never enter a tank or other confined space. Injury or death may occur. Inspect and clean the filter annually. If the filter looks clogged, turn off the pump with the main power switch. Remove the red lock. Turn the filter a quarter turn and allow water to flush out the bottom of the filter. 
If the filter needs additional cleaning, unscrew the plastic housing and manually wash the filter screen. Ensure the valve is placed back in the proper direction and all O-rings are replaced after cleaning. Remember to turn the pump back on. Inspect the pump for leaks at the beginning of the summer irrigation season. Ensure that the pump is protected during any winter freeze events. The pump should not run continuously. If it is, the pressure tank settings need to be adjusted. The instructions for the pressure tanks are inside the lid of the pressure switch. Inspect all pipes and fittings around the pump annually and check for leaks or cracks. If a fitting is cracked, it needs to be replaced.